Hello, 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 guys, and welcome to another episode of Choco Bros brought to you by our sponsors, Cars of Evilies. I'm a host, Sam Snight Prime. I'm Zach Burrell. And I am Cody Snodgrass. So this week, we're going to talk a little about the Opus 6 pre release and some thoughts we have on the format as a whole. We're going to start off with a little bit of Nationals news. Uh, so there are something like, what, six local qualifiers this weekend, right? Yes, there's six local qualifiers. Uh, there would be seven, but currently the O'Fallon, Missouri one uh, at Manicor Game Shop has been postponed until further notice due to a shipping issue. And how far uh, is that yeah. from you, by the way? Uh, that's 15 minutes from where I'm at. So. Okay. That's pretty sweet. Right down so the yeah, road. Anybody who is planning on attending a local qualifier this weekend, just double check that your store uh, you know, has the product and whatever else, uh, but everything should be fine. Um, also, the uh, so Cody, you were planning on playing one. Uh, we have one in Tampa at Sunshine Games. Uh, Sam, you said you may or may not be playing in it. Uh, that might have changed. I, I may or may not be playing it based off whether I can get a sponsor. So, like, if I can get someone to pay my entry and in return, mm-hmm. I will give them the four Opus Six packs and right. whatever I win minus the trophy. Um, that's basically like how the sponsorship would work for me or whatever. I did the same thing with pre release. Basically, like, if someone wanted to pay for my pre release. Um, I did both pre-releases, free rolled them. Um, basically, all I wanted was a sleeve, so I got two packs of unit sleeves, and they got to keep everything oh, open. Go. So it's pretty cool That's deal. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so also one other quick uh, tidbit about this weekend is anybody who's playing a local qualifier, there was a, a little bit of a rules change. Uh, Square let us know that the new set Opus Six will not be legal until the twentieth right. for local qualifiers. So plan on bringing an Opus Five deck, not Opus which, uh, Six meta, which is a bummer for a lot of us. Um, and mm-hmm. kind of a relief for like you, for example, right? <laughs> yeah, right. So it's a little know, bit of a mix. Like I, right. I'd like to play with them, right? But I'm also comfortable in Opus Five meta, so it's right. you know, it's both. Right. Um, I, I myself was really looking forward to like trying Opus Six and kind of like be the first person out the gate with like a really good Opus Six deck. Right, right. I'm much less incentivized to do that now. Uh, and, and so far as, even if I do play this weekend, I've actually very highly considered playing Mono Ice for Mono Lightning, which are like two decks I don't really enjoy yeah. playing. <laughs> yeah, Cody's happy. Just, just to try something different for the week, I don't know. Right, right. Expand your own horizons. I think so, yeah. So, speaking of, let's move right over to 6 then. So, how how do you guys feel? Uh, Cody, did you play in any pre-releases? Uh, yeah, I played in one pre-release uh, okay. on set, Saturday morning. Uh I didn't do too hot, but I think it's a it's I think it's a great set to uh to test the sealed format with. Uh mm-hmm. with the six or with the one C P reprints, uh, I think it makes it very interesting. Right, yeah, Sam, uh I know you were commenting this is the most fun you've ever had, actually, in a sealed format. Uh and you've played well, in It's the most fun I've ever had in uh, yeah, in, in in a yeah, I mean 'cause we've done sealed with cubes and it's a lot of fun, but yeah. in as far as an actual uh structured like Square Enix sponsored event yeah it's the right, o- right opus six was amazing uh i liked opus four mm-hmm. it was fun because it was a pre-release like well, we still it, had nine cards then right? or nine packs back then right we did but th- i guess the point is that it was fun because it was a pre-release right and then right. opus five was fun because it was a pre-release but a lot less fun because it was hard <laughs> to build your decks opus right. six was a blast and i think that um you know the thing is is that like it's not like i'm being super Specifically, say, oh, so yes, I my my pools did go. I did go undefeated with both my pools. That being said, uh, I had no bombs. I had mm-hmm. very little removal. I just played the correct ratios in my sealed pool that that you should, which was like four to five colors. Um, you know, I think actually one of them maybe it was splashing for the sixth color was like one of the ice Kazuza cards or whatever, mm-hmm. the one that deals ten k. Uh, you know, so and. and on top of that, I looked at like four or five other people's sealed pools after we played, and every one of them also had a very good sealed pool, and I'd have to say that every one of their decks was built very, very wrong, for sealed, at least in my opinion. And so, mm-hmm. while I'm not discounting that there are obviously in a game of variance where some people are just going to open really bad pools, I don't know what that looks like. I can't even imagine it, because there's the, the cards work so well together right. that I felt that, like... It definitely felt more comfortable for sure. Like, right. even if I had, like, an awkward hand, I could still piece something together that looked at least somewhat like a game plan. <laughs> and, and and that's that's if you had no evokers. Obviously, you have a bunch of evokers, mm-hmm. but without the evokers, it still felt insane to me. Like, right. but when you add the evokers, it was just like, so turn one, you play your two drop backup or whatever. Turn two, you almost certainly just dole one and play your one CP backup. Right. 
It felt a lot which like could the, a good constructed too. deck. Yeah. So, yeah. Right, which could be any element. So now I think people just were building their decks wrong, and I would mm -hmm. really encourage people to give it a try. I'm not saying I don't want nine packs. Uh, I voted right. nine <laughs> packs on the on the thing that I put up for uh, fans. Uh, I messaged powers that be personally and said I wanted nine packs. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I thought the pre-release went really well. I thought that they did an, an insanely great job with Sealed. So uh, Now, do you think, would you say a lot of that does have to do with the Evokers, though? Like, I'd say zero, those, zero percent. Uh, Maybe one percent. Oh, zero? Really? One. I was going to say, because uh, certainly the cards definitely feel better together, but the Evokers, to me, felt kind of like the glue that held everything together. It got you so you could curve out a little better and get more consistency. Yeah, my... Uh, I think that there was, like, when I was building my decks, I considered playing off-color evokers, for example, because right. they're just so high value. Like, if you could just play, like, it, it's so hard to explain. If you if you could play light evokers for one CP that you could actually discard in any <laughs> of your constructed decks, you might do it, depending on the deck, particularly in, like, your water decks. Or, right, yeah. You know, or your lightning decks, for example. If if, if you didn't have cards like Adia and Cognizant that, that cared about the counts or whatever... But, like, mm -hmm. the value is so good there that you would just do that. And limited, it's even more important. Like, especially, like, you know, in Opus 4 or 5, I would see people just, like, slam down these big forwards on the first few turns. And then that would sometimes win them the game, particularly if they slammed down, like, a Sobbin or something. Um, that's kind of how, that's how I won my first few rounds, yeah. Yeah, which is, which is the opposite, turn two. which is the opposite of what I did during Opus 4 and 5, is I would do the same thing. It was much harder, but I would just play backups, and then I would overwhelm these people in the late game. Um, right. so what I was doing in this pre-release, for example, is I had a whole bunch of like the, the five drop commons, um, <clears throat> maybe they're rares, uh, all the five guys, the standard units, like the red guy, yeah. the blue guy. The red one's great. Yeah. yeah. And so like, I just had these big guys that I played later and then I made sure like all my other stuff dealt with cards like Paul. Um, mm -hmm. so I think that every card in my deck besides my five drops interacted in some way with Paul. Or at least I tried to make it that way. So, like, I was playing... I was maybe playing barely any red, but I was still playing, like, my Bahamut. Because mm -hmm. I didn't want to, like, get pulled out of the game. Right. So, I don't know. Yeah, I Cody, just think that people just need to build their decks a little differently, honestly. Uh, Cody, was Paul kind of the star of the show at yours as well? Because we had kind of a joke going around. Because everybody was just jamming Paul turn one and turn two and just destroying people. Yeah, I didn't uh, I didn't actually have to go up against it until uh, the final round. Um mm -hmm. And I had quite a bit of removal for it. I played, I know I had at least two of the monks in there that would dull yeah. and deal 7k. Uh, I know that got rid of Paul every time yep. I faced him. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't pull a Paul. Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't either. And I, I didn't do so hot in my in my pre-release, but I had a lot of fun. I got I won an extra pack of Unisleeves for winning one game, so that was cool. Oh, that's sweet. Ooh, nice. Yeah, I, I fell victim to not reading the card. Uh, so when I played my own Paul, my opponent had a four drop that I just wasn't attacking into because I thought he was going to die. And I completely forgot that he had that first line of text that says he can't be blocked <laughs> by anything bigger than three. Uh, so I kind of, you know, beat myself a little bit. But it was funny that uh, you mentioned that, Sam, about the five drop uh, standard units because I, f I definitely found the uh, Fire Knight. I think it's Knight uh, or Warrior, one of the two. Like, it's the one warrior. that goes 11K? Yeah, the one that goes to 11. Um, it was funny because I had Garland in the same pool. And Knight was more valuable than Garland because I didn't have any princesses, and I don't I, have more Garlands for the. Yeah, I, I played I played both, but I would have much. I mean, that's how bad my pool was. It's like Garland right, was like playable two, uh, in my deck. Two warriors instead of a Garland or a warrior because right, yeah. strictly better in the pre-release. But uh, yeah, uh, so what cards surprised us in power, or I guess we start with what cards do you think are good because it was a pre-release, and what cards are good just because they are very good in the game yeah you, you you can go first if you want cody because i probably have a lot that i thought was uh, really good let's see uh as far as good in the pre-release uh kind of like what sam said a lot of those big five drop guys uh mm -hmm. they were great uh believe it or not i played matt or mott i'm not sure how you pronounce his uh -huh, name the, the monk guy yeah and i played i had a couple of the monks in my deck and it actually put in quite a bit of work for me um Leo kind of underperformed for me, unfortunately. I was super excited when I pulled him in my first pack, but uh, Leo was good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He didn't. He didn't do it for me, unfortunately. That, Every that, time I got in my six color thought, deck, I had Leo. Yeah, oh, geez. I kept taking him as like my first or second damage, yeah. and I was just like, oh. um, but as far as 
outside of sealed, uh, the new Yastola. I've been testing that quite a bit, and I'm a big fan of that card. That card seems very good. Uh, yeah. Now, Inter- you... Interesting enough, it has to be in science, so I think. Um, I was going to say, yeah, does it have to be? or It, ha- it has to be, because the other two effects... Um, first off, the the, the the second one, that or the third effect, I guess, on the card, technically, is the one where it breaks something when it attacks, right? Mm-hmm. Or it deals, like, 8k or something like that. You have, like, five Scions, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, something it's just like never going to happen outside of Scion deck. The Absolutely. three Scions thing could happen. Um, several of the Scions are good enough as backups, like um, Menphilia. Uh, you could be playing your Angers in your deck. You could, might just play... Um, uh, just, some 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 of the other signs are playable, so that I can see that being played. And if you but right. if you're looking for the first ability, you're already playing Vincent, which is obviously much better. Uh, in a vacuum, yeah. Not just because it has death penalty. Um, it is searchable by different things, but you know it also has like, the Yuffie synergy. So, mm. yeah, I don't know. Right. Uh, cards that were also were like really good for me that I thought like I saw people not playing with cards like like Sid the Sid Eleven. Um, uh, like <clears throat> if you're not playing red, I'll well, two, right? Uh, no, sit a sit eleven. I thought it was two, red. like I I. He's talking about the fire one, I believe. Oh, the fire, oh, the fire okay, one, sorry. yeah, the backup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you're not, oh, first off, if you're playing sit two, you should definitely be, you should be playing playing that in every pool, uh, sealed pool. <laughs> right. Uh, this guy should make every single sealed deck. I think that you're playing. Um, mm-hmm. the pump 2000 is actually really good in the aggressive decks, uh, decks that are like have Elsid that are going to tap your guys down. So you could tap them down one turn, the next turn you could like just pump your guys over their guys and yeah. keep attacking. Um, actually I would, I would say this, a lot of the backups that people, uh, like, like people should be playing all the backups that do things, even when they're off color often. Right. Um, so they're not, they're never off color, right? Cause you can always play them with whatever colors you have. Right. I mean, there's some oh. limitations to that, but yeah, you should be right. A uh, card that was really insane for me in the pre-release, which I think might be good enough is Zell. Um, mm-hmm. So when Zell comes in, he does the, where it deals the damage um, or he breaks a, a, a little monster. I think it's like two or less, right? Um, yes. I used both of those abilities and both of my sealed pools very often, but what I would see my opponents do was so weird. It, it's just, it's baffling to me the way people play sometimes. Like, they will go, like, turn, like, turn one, play back, turn two, play back, and then turn three, like, zell in with haste and hit me. And I'm just like, that was, like, a terrible zell, you know? Because, like, I could untap, play my zell, kill their zell, and hit them. Right, you want to do more of a you, mid to late game zell to get the value out of them. Yeah, you, like, zell, zell should be there to, like, to kill something. Especially in the format where there's, there's a lot of monsters, actually, um... That got got pretty good value. Mm-hmm. Um, like our was sick. Yeah, I was gonna say our spoiler X was pretty good. Um, and like you shouldn't be playing your Zells until that happens. Um, same thing, uh, Bahamut. You know, in in sealed, you get one less damage. Um, but it's a lot harder to make a comeback. I think if if your opponent just has a big guy and you can't deal with it. So a right. card like Bahamut to me was like really good. And, uh, I, and I talked to you about this earlier, but there were several times where, like, my opponent had, like, a 9k in board, on board. And I would just, like, try and, like, outmaneuver and out-combat trick it. And I would refuse to Bahamut it until, like, they would play, like, it, a, a much worse threat. Um, right. And then when I when they played a threat that I just couldn't deal with, that's when I would catch my Bahamut. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that card is a dangerous card in Constructed, but it might be really good, particularly with the backup that plays things for free. Um, yeah, Ajito? No, that's not <clears> what I, that's not the one I meant. Um, I meant the, the <laughs> six the six drop, Vermilion. Uh, K-Tuna, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. whatever the Vermilion thing is. So that that card um, also, like I wasn't playing, I didn't have it, I wasn't fortunate to have the card in my sealed pool, but that card in Constructed makes me feel like Bahamut could see play. Mm-hmm. Um Cards that under or a Ruby Dragon too. Like, I don't know how much this fire is looking for that. It's pretty expensive, but if there's some sort of fire control deck and constructed, I could see that being good. Um, well, it's like the same as Bahama. It's just delayed. Uh, like it's you see it coming. It's on field, well, but you, can you don't it exile. It's kind of like the dragon yes. argument, like Odin. Yeah, but you don't exile with right. You do with that is a difference. Yeah, the card that underperformed too. While we're still talking, well, I'm still talking about some of the red cards I liked is uh, Neo Bahamut. Um, <laughs> You know, I actually didn't have any Neo Bahamas, but it was used against me quite often, and it was always quite poor. 
Uh, that being said, I don't know. Like, I could see my. It, I would have been happy to open some to try them out. I still think the card might see play. Um, I had one with that fire backup that goes and searches a summon because I figured if I'm discarding my whole hand to play the six drop, I might as well go find this two drop that you know, discards my hand when I don't have one. Did it ever work? Uh, nope. I always drew the Bahamut first. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, Three times. <laughs> Kazuza was nuts for me in sealed. I didn't play ice in either of my decks, but I did play Kazuza, and that's mm -hmm. the one that deals the 10k. Um, and that and card, it, that and it breaks in Shivaism. Yes. That card was, I I do feel like that card's definitely like constructed worthy. Oh yeah, that um, card seems very good. It, now it's not good at like these aggressive ice decks, but you know the way it works obviously is that the aggro decks <clears throat> beat up on the control decks, and just like in Magic, I don't think it's any different in this game. Uh, if you're if the bigger ice decks, and I talked about this with Jamie last week, the bigger ice decks always win. If you're if you're trying to get to the biggest ice deck, Kazuza kills Orphan, mm -hmm. uh, and does so with a great amount of value. So I, that card could see play. I could see Kuja. Like I didn't get Kuja, but I could see Kuja seeing a lot of play too. Um, there, there, there are a lot of cards that like were like. Okay, here's a card. Squall felt so underwhelming, and uh -huh, and yeah. it, it it was played against me, and I just like was so easy. Now in constructed when they have like Jespers and th and Thaumaturges, it's gonna be harder to keep cards in your hand, right? Right. But I don't know. Is Squall good? Is Cody? Is Squall on your radar at all? Uh, not yet. Uh, but I'm. I also haven't switched over to the Jesper build yet. Okay, so. but you could see it playing, if you were. Yeah, I'm still playing more of a like a like a tempo game. I'm not playing quite as aggressive yeah. with dice. Now, how do you um, feel about Kazusa? Uh, Kazusa. I don't. I don't know. I think I'm still higher on the the two drop. Oh, uh, but then again, but then again, that's, that's more of the super discard. Right. Uh, one other card before we move on. Uh. That I can mention and sealed Cactar, uh, the summon, that was huge. <laughs> Very good, yeah. Yeah, did a lot of like twelve and sixteen Ks with that. Cactars are rare, right? Yes. Yeah, I yeah. somehow didn't open either of a single one during my sealed. I believe it's all confirmed, but. Yeah, I mean, it, I had, had I common. opened one, it would have been. Common. Oh, yeah, a common. common? Yep. Yeah. So I opened twelve packs and didn't get one. <laughs> I got yeah, I got one in a foil in my first pool, and then I got another one in my second pool. Yeah. Um, other cards that I thought were really good that could see constructed play, uh, Sid Hayes was, was obviously insane. Like I played it in both my decks. That's the one that goes oh, against the, the standard unit. Yeah. Standard unit yeah. Good. I think like the fact that it has EX burst puts it like right there when water, water wind wants to be playing like Braun and Sid Hayes and like, oh man, it, right. like that lets you play like a unique character with EX burst twice. Yeah, Since they're much. basically the same thing. Yeah, I think that's like super and cool. It, I think that's a really be, cool design, by the way. It like, may be more valuable than Braun too, because the standard unit decks wants to have Gladiator. Uh, it might want to have that's uh, a good point. Yeah, or summons or something. Yeah. So you want to have a backup that you're playing sure. that's the other color to match up with those. Sure. So it could almost be better. Sure. Uh, Shinra was good for me um, during my sealed deck, but I think I'd rather play Brother if I, if we're okay. talking about constructed cards. I mean, what are you guys' thoughts like? Oh yeah, because brother just—it's what three CP, it's no three, EX, three CP. Searches. You get any uh, uh, category any 10. ten character. Yeah, yeah. Right. but no EX. I think that's just a lot stronger. I think like one CP is not worth adding EX. Right, like take yeah. any EX and, card and more, minus more niche. yeah minus EX from it and lower it by one CP, and the card is just way better. Right. Probably. Kuja, if Kuja was no EX and would cost four, my god. <laughs> right, if, if sid hayes was no ex and minus the cp holy crap you can say that about a lot of cards though <laughs> that's yeah. what i'm saying like like <laughs> adding one adding one cp is never worth the ex burst cost i think uh cards that were super bad chocomog i had so many of my opponents play chocomog to go get something uh i, I just can't see the only scenario where i think it's good right and by good, I want to put this in quotes, good, is when you Chocomog into Moogle <laughs> to go get a card, which is a net minus 2 CP. You're paying 2 extra, no, 3 CP more for whatever you're going to do. Oh, God, no, it's 4 CP more because you're discarding the Chocomog, right? You're tapping the Moogle to go get a card, and you're paying 1 for the Chocomog. That's, that's infinite. You're paying 4 more. 
Yeah, in constructed, I can see that a lot more because your cards are a lot more impactful and your consistency needs to be up. Maybe. I would, I can't think of a single time where I would pay four CP more for any card other than Shantoto. And the only time, and that's only because when you need Shantoto, you need Shantoto. That's that's it. There's never another time where like there's any card that saves you. It just feels like Shantoto is that card. Maybe it's just the decks I play, but you maybe. know, the games I lose are only the games I don't trust Shantoto. <clears throat> yeah. So. Um. So real quick, before we go to cards that were kind of duds for us, uh, I just want to highlight uh, the a card that I think is very good and actually almost too powerful, but just very good in the sealed and construct or non-constructed formats was Kane, the three CP that uh, when your opponent plays a dark character, they take control of it. Oh unless yeah. They open, unless they open, or a dark forward. Sorry, unless they play Nidhog, which oh sure you have to draw and be playing Nidhog. That card's just a free big body on three cp it was yeah so very for, the, for the record i'm not even talking about just like cards that were bad i'm just going down the list yeah yeah and so like i got to show them on but if we're going to kane yeah i mean i played one kane it was mm-hmm. i i didn't draw in any of my matches so i can't tell you oh but yeah, i played yeah, it because it was obviously yeah. going to be good and i had a lot of dragoons so i was definitely playing like a dragoons matters deck in my first sealed pool so yeah, one of our uh, buddies drew, he had a pool with he had legendary Stinian, he had the uh, Ricard, three different standard unit dragoons, yeah. uh, wow. and like a cane. It was insane. He had so many dragoons. Yeah, he got trashed. Did he? I yeah. never. I didn't see yeah. <laughs> it was Alfred. What's up, Alfred? Oh, it was Alfred, Alfred, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, he got thrashed. Um, yeah, you know, I played a. I played all the standard dragon. You, or dragoons, um, the center unit ones, and they were like pretty good. I didn't get any of the busted ones, but I like them mm-hmm. a lot. I could definitely see it being a standard deck, uh, constructed deck with um, right. the dragoons, particularly Kane. I think he's really good. Um, and Steenia could be good. Uh, I like the three drop probably a little bit more and the ag- and the very aggressive decks. Right. But I don't know. Obviously, then you're probably mono lighting. You go. You don't get to have your blue splash as easily anyway. Certainly, yeah. Great. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, maybe there's something in dual color anyway. Yeah. Um, another card I thought was, like, insane. <laughs> Absolutely insane. I actually didn't pull any of these, but I had it played against me. was was uh, Diablos. Um, and I think that, mm-hmm. that that card will see constructed play. It's almost always a two-for-one. Um, right. So. I mean, I you're drawing a card, too. Like, any card that's what that's I'm saying, yeah. 3 CP draws a card and likely kills your guy, like, that's going to be. Playable. I mean, it's not impossible either that, like, they attack with their their paul and then you block with your rear anger and then like make your guy a 4k and kill their paul and draw a card so that's true never thought about it as a buff on uh, it buffs a lot of cards so it buffs leo it buffs fun. it buffs cobalt Druid in the monster mirror so yeah it turns leo into a base 4k plus all the characters you can control it does, yeah sweet. yeah <laughs> yeah so that card that card's pretty good um you uh Richard Brady posted a cool because I'm coming up to like pain and Riku now, um, and, and Riku was very good for me. Like removing it from combat was awesome. By the way, did you, you um, have a special? Oh, I had three Rikus. When I say I didn't have any bombs, that's gonna add a whole bunch of crap like Riku. Okay, <laughs> so and and I had the Shinras. So you know, oh, all, wow. yeah. So I I use this special quite often. I thought it was really good. <laughs> uh, Richard Brady's deck. If you guys haven't seen it is a wind earth uh kind of like mid-range control deck uh splashing just three unas off of playing it off star sybil shantotos mm-hmm. and chaos um and it's pretty dope i think the deck that could be deck good is awesome yeah yeah so that that card seemed really good to me i don't know if that's what i want to play first but i'm certainly at some point gonna at least try that out because it looks yeah. A, it looks good, and B, it looks just like a blast. Like, there's a lot of really cool interactions built in there between the Hashmals and the Titans. Yeah. Speaking of Titan, that card was insane as well. Almost always a two-for-one in the uh, pool. Like, yeah. you win combat. And the first time I read it in the spoiler, I thought it was, like, another Hecaton effect where it pumps your guy in fights. Like, it's just another type of that. But yeah. it's actually just one-sided. It's like the Yeah, I, ha- I had someone hit a Titan into EX Burst when I attacked them, and mm-hmm. then the next turn, the untap and Titaned me. Oof. They had two Titans. That's so absurd to me. Like, <laughs> they, they, that's just, I mean, that's how I always feel about my limited pools. I'm always just like, wow, cool, you have that too? Awesome. They must, said as must you be. showed them your three Rikus. 
<laughs> right, yeah, that's, that's fair. You know, and actually, I came up to this card, Ajito, which, you know, I'm sure we're going to have a lot to talk about. I think it's really good. Um, I don't know if that's considered a bomb or not, but I did have Ajito in my, <clears throat> in my pool, and it was insane. Ajito um, certainly, I think, might just be an archetype all by himself, like, and constructed. I have him in, like, four decks. Enables so many different summons, yeah. archetypes, and ways to build it, whether you want more backups, less backups, forwards, no forwards, whatever. Uh, there's a lot you can do with that card. Yeah. And there's yeah. a lot of support for it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to play with Fire, you can break it with Fearing to play another one. If you're in Lightning, you can play Lulu H to break it to play another one. If you're in Earth, I mean, you could go into Mystic or Delita or something. Yeah. Uh, or you, you can figure you, out a way to bounce it with Mion. You, you don't even have to do any of those things either. You could just play the card the one time, and it's probably very good. Like, oh, yeah. Like I, I consider like playing one of them in my Wind Earth deck, and you have like the Star Stubble to go get it. And just like... Anytime you're able to get like a, a Diabolus and a Hecaton here back to your hand, mm -hmm. doesn't the game just end? Like literally <laughs> ends, right? That is pretty good. Yeah. Like, in fact, let me just throw this out there. There are going to be times when you play a Gito from your hand as your fifth backup, okay? And you're going to cast a Diabolus for free, untap your backups, kill one of their guys, and then proceed with your turn as if. You mm -hmm. lost a single card from your hand, they lost a whole guy, and you gained a backup, and everything's untapped. Right. It, it does more than time walk them. That's, that's like, amazing to me. Yeah, the, the card is absolutely insane. And the fact that... Finding the right deck is going to be the problem, right? Certainly. Right. And the fact that it casts one without mana cost is already insane, but the fact he gets two summons back, and there's no element restriction. Yeah, there, that was... a lot of effects That was interesting, or... right? Was that a mistake? there's a lot of effects like that, but, like, I mean, Ico gets anything, but you have to, like, pick four, Exile, whatever. But you get two back from any element. Hey, let's... That is absurd. Let, let, let's talk about that, because that's the next card uh, that I think is nuts, is Minfilia. Holy crap. Yeah. yeah. Ha, have, so, you said you were playing with Estola, Cody, right? Uh, yeah, testing you, it, like, not at the pre-release, but... Okay, are you sure. playing with Minfilia in those decks? Uh, I'm testing... I had one of the new one in it. Uh -huh. And then a couple of the EX burst one. That's like, how I uh, have mine built, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that the play moving forward is reverse it. Um, really? Maybe. I think that this Minfilia is just so good. I don't even know where to start. It's The only problem with it is it doesn't there break are the no one problems. dark character <laughs> that you would like it to break, which is the Emperor. I don't think that's a problem. I but don't think that that, that Emperor the is a problem for the, de <laughs> for the type of decks that Minfilia is going to go into. It's probably fair. Yeah, like that card to me is. I mean, they can't just play Cam yeah. on the field either with that there, or they yeah. can't do like some crazy light and dark strategy because otherwise you just break their Cosmos or Chaos. Like, there's a lot of things this just shuts down. It's a nice yeah. threat, and yeah, it's basically two CP. You get stuff back it, early uh, on your first turn if you really need to. You can just discard a forward and a backup and yeah. some other card and get them back. Late game, you recycle uh, to basically get a fourth copy of a forward or something that's important in the matchup. Definitely a strong card. Yeah, so uh, Cypher was one of the other cards that was the the rare one, not not the legend. The rare one was absurdly good for me. Um, mm -hmm. uh, in both my pools, I did have an Ultimecia, um, and I'll and I will definitely I'm definitely going to talk about Ultimecia because um, it is my type of card. Uh, <laughs> but Cypher was so good for me at just like color fixing. But I've actually played against against. I remember there was a turn where I went like turn two Cypher the rare and he would turn to cypher the legend and i was just like what <laughs> so i don't know but that's the same guy tightened me i think um anyway so like that card is scary right is that card like on the radar for playable the ex burst the three cp no the 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 legend hmm i i'm on the fence about that card uh i'll think about it cody do you have any thoughts while i'm pondering it uh, I played against a Wind Lightning. Uh, was playing that whole uh, Final Fantasy VIII Wind Lightning package. Uh, the only problem was is I had Ranger, like the three CP con or three CP standard unit. Mm -hmm. uh, so he he like would he kept swinging into my Rangers, and I'm like, you can't debuff like you can't buff this with that effect. And he's just like, oh, but uh, I don't know. I think it's it's something to be on the radar. I uh, I think the uh, the EX burst actually I think it's pretty playable. But I also like the I also like the new idea quite a bit yeah um i the yeah it is interesting yeah and you know Th thomas Wynn actually posted an article that i was just getting ready to read before so i haven't got a chance to read that article 
but I, I know that the, the first thing he talks about is that, so I, I'm going to read the article before commenting. But he's a good player, so I'm going to trust whatever he says. Check it. If you haven't read the article, it's on Meta Potion. Um, so if you haven't, you know, if you know, what like what about it? Because the right the way I'm thinking about it is that if you're going to play a Dia, you're obviously going to maximize. You're going to max out on the other legend one first, right? Uh, and so if you're playing a card, like oftentimes when you're playing Terra, for example, well, let's say you're playing the, the four drop Ice Terra, you don't really play, like let's say you have a Devout, you, what you do is you usually hold the Terra until you can get another Terra, and then you'll, you'll Magic Charge. Uh, right. But sometimes that's not possible, so what you do is you let the first Terra die, and you don't play the second one, or, or you don't Devout it back in until you draw the second one, and you Magic Charge again, so you kill two other guys again. You know, you can't really do the same thing with the Dia because, like, you crack a Dia, you bring back in a Dia, and the problem is, is, like, if you want to death them, it's four extra CP right. for death, right? That's what it is, it's four CP. It's something like four CP plus copy of a Dia, yeah. And maybe yeah. that's fine. Like, maybe just killing it is fine. It's supposed to be an Odin, a little cheaper, and but harder to cast, yeah. Yeah, I guess, you know, I was thinking that maybe, like, the problem with it is that you also are going to draw that back up when you have the forward, but I guess you can still death people then also. Mm -hmm. Since, you know, you can... Yeah, so maybe that card's just nuts. Yeah, there's something interesting about it, too, that I mentioned, uh, corner case, obviously, but if they ever try to, like, destroy it with a hair launcher, you yeah. can always break it, targeting another copy of the backup self in the break zone, and it'll just replace itself with the backup, yeah. and it won't break anymore, and you get to save your backup. I not don't know why anyone would ever do that, game. but yeah. Yeah, not that, like, maybe they're just afraid of, like, a future idea coming in, and they're, well, yeah. nope, switch it. Uh, but also, it's kind of cool for the future, looking forward, uh, what other witches we get. I mean, we, obviously, Ultimacia and Idea are the only two that have that job right now, correct? Uh, I think so. uh yes. Yeah. So, There's four it, total I mean, cards. you can bring back an Ultimacia, five, that's kind of yeah. cool, but, uh, it has no cost restriction, so if we get like another legendary of either of those, or just a very powerful version that costs a lot, I mean, it's something to look uh, uh look for in the future. Yeah, yeah. The another lightning card that is is insane is uh, Rama. It's like it's so as a person who is one hundred percent behind the monster decks, I love the tricolor monster deck. It is my favorite deck probably that's ever been around. It's it's such a <laughs> blast to play. Um, that card is terrifying. Yeah. Terrifying. Like, obviously they can just break your two drop. Obviously they can kill it once it turns sideways. But there's actually plays where, like, you could activate your guy and then they could just dole it and then break a different monster and then you don't get your no-no trigger and your turn just ends. And they just well, two-fold you. Or they shoot it for 7k. So they kill it. Instead That's of doling it, they can just kill it. Well, no, it's, it's oftentimes better just to dole it. Because you you effectively end the turn because they don't get any no no triggers. Well, it has to be active to kill it, not dull. The to do seven thousand to it. No, the but Rama could just break it too. Right, but I'm saying you could kill two of them instead of dulling one and killing one. You can just if they activate it like a Cobra Droid or a Green Dragon, you just seven K the one that's active and break another one that's not active yet before it attacks. Um, yeah, that's why dull it when you can kill it? There, there's probably a few reasons actually. Um. Yeah, because like so, yeah, there, there's definitely scenarios where you definitely need to dull it, um, because you, okay. you're, well, in other words, like you can't scalp out. You, you have no way to know the the way that they're gonna f phase their attack step, and sometimes like they might want to activate something, and then use that CP afterwards. So like maybe they'll activate it in an attack, or like I think the better versions play Viking, kind of like the better monsters, water monsters decks play Viking now, um, but like the better. Tricolor monsters that could be playing Viking to get no no triggers out, and so you don't want to give them an extra trigger. But you're not between. giving them a trigger. Once they attack with it, it's going to untap. Right, but they don't get to attack because you kill it before they attack. They activate their green dragon, and then oh, before it attacks, I see what you're you seven k it, and then you break oh, another. Monster. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, but that's not always going to work, too, right? Well, um, I like, mean, if they have a Maria or right, right, that's sure. what I'm saying. Yeah, and like the local guys also play that. Like uh, Maria right now is played. Um, and most of the local monster decks, because like Cobra Droid attacking into a 3k <laughs> Cobra Droid when it's a 4k is a huge advantage, and that's gonna like swing right. the game over. And unless they have um, a realm, they can't pump a Cobra Droid up, so yeah, you could maybe two for one that. It's but. obviously good with Malboro, it's you know, <clears throat> yeah, but 
I, I don't play it personally. I think it's just too slow. Um, it's great in the mirror match, but it's just right. it, you, you're going to lose every other monster matchup where you just draw Maria and you need to be playing your monsters out as quickly as possible. So, right, but right. that card is just anyway. The point is that card is just absolutely terrifying. Like, oh, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, I just I I never want to see that card ever. That card <laughs> that that card could stop me from playing monsters going forward. Yes, I think. At first, I thought it was going to be overlooked because just no one was talking about it. But I think it's not going to take long for people to realize how powerful Ramu is. Like, just uh, having... It's essentially the one CP Ramu without any experts. Yeah. Then you get one of your other choice of effect for two CP. You can give something haste, which is like a red mage backup. You can dull something, which is like an ammon active. Like, that extra two CP is not a huge cost for those other effects. You could just kill something for two CP, basically. It's a very powerful card. You know, it, it, it didn't take long for people to realize how good Glacia Bolas is, and that mm -hmm. card feels exactly the same. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I don't know. That, that card just seems very good to me. I do like Ramu. Now, uh, you said you want to talk about Altamisha a little bit. Yeah, um, so Altamisha, so a lot, of, I, a lot of my matches would come, because I had so many ways to search up Altamisha. Um, right. But a lot of my matches, what I would do is I'd play these big five drops, like stonewall my opponent, and then they would have play some guys so I couldn't attack either back. We, we had to stalemate as games often do. What I would do is I'd Ultimisia, right? And I'd dole down their big guy that wanted to attack, and I'd leave one of my big guys back so they couldn't they couldn't attack in and stall them out. I'd get to like seven forwards on the board, and then like all I had to do was like, okay, end of your turn, dole one of your guys. Dole another one of your guys, untap, dole your third guy, attack with my four guys. Go. Right. And, like, there was nothing that they could do. Now, so. uh, yeah, did you see any of that, Cody, at your release as well? Uh, I didn't see any Ultimisha. Um, my, uh, my pulls, I'm, I'm hearing Sam talk about how great his pulls were. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, like, these I are all rares lot. and commons, to be fair. No, yeah, but, but that's how you win these things. No, like, I agree. I pulled... I pulled three legends and I was like, oh man, I got this. Like, and then I sit down and I'm like, wait, I don't have any cane. I'm like, I don't have Riku. I have Shinra and I have one pain. I have no Riku. Uh, <laughs> I had no dragoons at all. So like, I was, I, I didn't have much synergy going on. Like the commons oh, wow. and rares win these like sealed events. I think. Absolutely. I, I like a that, guy yeah. across from me, uh, Jamal. He he was opening and he was making this big deal on like oh i pulled no legends in my thing blah 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 and like my deck's horrible and then he like went had a positive record because he just had good standard units and like he searched up cypher every turn and had the he had the whole like the trio he had the raiji and fuji yep. uh both different cyphers and uh or i'm sorry i guess he didn't have legend one but he had like multiples of the small one uh yeah. kept giving like he had wasted damage you so that, like the first strike actually killed you on a 3k very yeah. frustrating uh, card that was bad that I th had was Thornton. Um, really? I don't know that this will be bad and constructed. Uh, it has EX Burst. Mm -hmm. uh, when it breaks, you draw a card, and you get any card constructed. That includes right. Chantoto. So, you know, that, that, that's for me. <laughs> um, that being said, in Limited, even though a lot of my decks were actually water, and I would play this even like in a deck without water, because you can play with any color, um... I it just felt too slow to me. Mm -hmm. I it, need it I needed to develop yeah I needed awesome. to develop my backups. Uh, that being said, I, I still played it. I just how slow it felt worries me about its constructed possibility. Now now do you think that part of its cost being higher? A it's a powerful effect like oh, harmonic tutor effect. It's is, the most powerful effect at all. Exactly. Of, yeah. But do you think they may maybe put the so that second clause where once put the battlefield the breaks and you draw a card. Do you think that was kind of like an excuse to make it cost more so that the effect was more expensive? So it's like, yeah, but you do draw a card if it breaks, but how relevant is that actually? And it just ends up making the card over costed. It's not relevant at all unless mm -hmm. the deck is built around it. Right. And that type of deck is already going to be a little slow right now. So it just depends. Like, and, mm -hmm. and the thing is, is like the maybe Turbo Ice is not the best deck moving forward, but it can, it's still a deck. Because what it did, those cards aren't going away. They don't rotate. It could still do that in Opus 6. It could still do it in Opus 7. Now, those obviously, the cards are getting more powerful, so maybe they won't be as impactful. But I just don't think that you're going to have time 
to potentially play against a mono ice player who's maybe playing a budget list and has to play this turbo discard because Jesper's Thaumaturges, Argaths, and Sarahs aren't very expensive. Mm-hmm. And then you'll you'll never get to play your Thornton. Um, so I don't know. It, Did it anyone have any me. experience with or against <laughs> Shuyan? That was a card I kind of wanted to see how it would be, but I never got to see anyone actually play it. No. I've been that's very the... sad if that was one of my heroics, though. <laughs> I, I listen. I and that's coming from someone who had Materia as a heroic. Right. I would have been, been sadder I'd... to have a shoe in. Yeah, I had a bunch of Materias, and it felt bad because I never got the Horace Velger. So. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't go up against any shoe in. I didn't even I see one see... pulled actually. Yeah, I want to see how powerful that was because the problem with the card is that it checks power like to initially target. It's not like a choose a target and then check power on resolution type thing. So yeah. it's just you're not taking much that's very impactful, and you're paying five for the seven that's gonna only temporary. Yeah, it's a, it's weird. But I right, thought maybe yeah. unlimited would be impactful. Yeah. Um, um, another card you said you were surprised about, I know, was the uh, five drop standard unit, uh, paladin, paladin. Right. Yeah. Yeah, paladin. You know, could see play with uh, Waka and Minwu. Or maybe mm-hmm. even the standard unit deck with Maria. Anywhere it would make it a nine K so that you just so it cannot die to a Dataluma. Right. Um and I mean you don't need Minwu, but like it just helps. What well, doesn't die to Dataluma right now anyway, right? Because it, it takes it, four less in combat. Right. Yeah, I'm trying to think, is there any way so yeah. So you'd have to the yeah, the only way is to war mech. Yeah, you'd have to war mech it with a Dataluma and then you could like but war making it one time is it war making is it the next time or just this turn? This turn. Yeah, so war making it one time, and then attacking with it would kill power. Be ten, it would take six, and then six, it would take two. So yeah, yeah. Right. So war making it one time would kill it. That being said, that's a very niche scenario. Right. Right. But you could also, yeah. So anyway, I guess the, the, my point was is the reason I brought it up, or you brought it up this time, but the reason I brought it up to you earlier is like it really does just kind of like hose data luma. Now, grant you, grant you, I'm not saying the card's busted. It's a 5 CP 8K. So, I'm not saying it's right. busted by any <laughs> means. But, you know, maybe there's some niche scenario where you're like, deck loses a data luma and you're very standard unit based and you need an answer. Maybe that's a, an okay answer. I don't know. No, absolutely. I mean, it takes no damage from the pings unless someone is this weird fire Warmack deck. But then they have the, you know, cost yeah. of putting fire in their deck yeah i mean i give it like a one percent <laughs> chance to see play but it is a, it is a cool card absolutely uh, i think if you're i think if you're playing the uh like the wind or like a data luma deck i think you're no matter what you're playing uh diavolos so right we talked about that too like True. it's just you're right, right. I feel like you're, just, you're just breaking it, anyway. it reactivating your backups and moving That's, on that is the other problem yeah it's five cp so yeah it's it destroyed um yeah i i opened a minwu as one of my legends and did not play. Did I not play? It? Yeah, I did not play it. Um, I wanted either because Cactor does zero damage, and that's the only summon I had. <laughs> so I also had very little summons. I had Bahamut, which was like maybe worth making it play, but maybe actually I had Bahamut in the second sealed. I'm trying to think. I don't. I don't remember exactly. I just know that I had Benwu in the first one for sure, and I remember not having really many summons. I had Leviathan, um, and then I maybe had Doom Train. I and, forgot about his first effect. I thought he was just, you know, attack, play a summon for free. I completely forgot that he reveals the top five and you take a summon. Now that you say that, I, I just had to look at that too and be like, wait, he has another effect. Yeah, <laughs> I completely forgot he has the entry. Oh, oh geez. So, so that's why he's a 4 CP 7k, because he might yeah, sometimes yeah. draw a card. Yeah. Meh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I actually, um, I, I pulled him in in my, in my first sealed as well. Oh, nice. Did you and play I it? Put him yeah, I played him uh, just because I had quite a few water cards. Uh, and, I mean, he didn't really do much for me. Oh. Every time I every time I used his effect, it wouldn't really net me anything. So Yeah, yeah, I was disappointed with my water pools because, like, my first pre-release, my very first pack, Foil Yuna. I was like, yeah, let's get all the go-wings. And I remember I, I saw that. I was just like... I got yeah. Riku. No, I got Pain, not Riku. Um, but then when I went through my cards, I had, like, a Water Evoker, two Thornton, <laughs> uh another water backup and that was it like i had six water cards i was like i don't know if i can splash just for the unit in that looking back probably could have because thordon and evoker would have done it yeah but uh for sure. i i didn't make that decision because I, yeah. I learned that was my first pre-release i learned after the first pre-release how to build a little better so my second one went 
you know, nicer. Yeah. I remember looking at someone's deck and they had, um, let me see real quick. They So they had a Kurosame, right? Mm-hmm. And they had two Kazuzas. Okay. They weren't playing I, any of those cards because they felt like their ice was pretty weak. And I was like, whoa, whoa hold on. First off, <laughs> Kurosame discards for two CP of not of any color, but far playing backups, discards for two CP of any color. So it's playable. Second off, it has EX burst. Third, if you have two Kuros, uh, Kazuzas, like you can break one to Shiva them and play another one that you searched <laughs> off the Kurosame. Like, right. you gotta be playing these cards. So yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. and that goes back to what we we're saying. Like splashing a color is not unreasonable. Like I, I was playing a copy of Titan with no Earth cards. Like I was like, if I hit on EX, great. Otherwise, I just discard it for a backup or something. Yeah. Uh, and that never did anything for me. But you know, could have. <laughs> All right. So so let's let's real quick move into a, a really strong because we obviously skipped cards. We didn't talk about Renoa because we probably didn't play against it. We didn't talk about Zidane because we probably didn't play against it. Let's talk about the cards that are going to break the format. And I, I, I said it very jokingly, um, sort of. But, like, like Renault is obviously very good, right, guys? Like, what, what's our yeah. thoughts on Renault here? Uh, I think we'll pass that one on to Cody. <laughs> uh, I think she's great. Uh, Ice obviously has some of the best into the field abilities in the entire game. In almost every card that we play. I say we like all these Ice players. Uh, but, like... Uh, Every into the field ability is usually pretty busted. Even if it's just like a Thought Maturge or an Argath for another yeah, discard, that could yeah. be super detrimental. Right. Like Genesis seems insane then, too. You locked out a card for multiple turns. Like, mm-hmm. uh, and, and to me, that's a, a reason that I think Kuja is possible to see play again. And maybe the turbo versions, are, it's not good enough. But uh, yes, it is a single more CP Genesis that's a lot bigger and has a plus side light in the game though. Uh, right, Kuja. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kuja, the new one. Yeah, and it hits it hits monsters, which and is it, also and super it hits helpful. Monsters, right? Yeah. yeah. So you, that that annoying Cobra Droid dude, lock the thing down. <laughs> right. Yeah, I th- I think that card could definitely see play. Um, Zidane. Um, besides the obvious like, Dawn's, uh plus Jesper versions, like yeah. that that card <laughs> just could see be good. Like, what if you use Zidane, them, and then attack. And activate your Sid two, go get it. Go Sid get two, an Evoker, yeah. then like reactivate it. Go get another Evoker, and so you, so your Sid, your Zidane like netted you six CP, um, which is nuts, right? Well, I guess you lose one from the the Sid tap, so you it nets you five CP. So I don't think people realize too how valuable CP is. Like like every game comes down to how much more CP you got than your opponent did, right? That's why how I love, much less you spent. Yeah, that's why I yeah. love going first, for example. But, you know, you always start with two more. Um, so Zidane, like, when, when that happens, you are plus 5 CP. That's that's insane, right? Not only that, but you're, you're, you're down two cards out of your deck, two evokers that you didn't want to draw in the late game. Yeah. Now, I guess and that may that... fuel <clears throat> these bigger cards. Like, maybe people start playing Minerva again or something. These cards that normally you wouldn't because it's kind of awkward to play and really, like, get to hold cards back to cast. You could, so yeah. So, ramps you into that. You could. I think that because of the nature of the limitation of having three of a card in the deck, you, you will have, excuse me, you'll have to play um, multiple colors, mm-hmm. uh, which is ironic because it's not exactly... Wind is known for support, but it's, you know, it likes to be wind. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. win matters is kind of its deal, um, and so like I could see you playing, exa- for example, ice wind, and you playing both of the one CP backups. There was that deck that came out of um, forget where it came out of. Maybe it was out of Ohio or something. You were playing for a while. It was a fire lightning deck. That was uh, Devin Wellsbacher. Okay, so then Ohio yeah. is correct. Mm-hmm. Right, so like the idea is that in that deck, uh, Devin was playing like the one CP fire cards and the one CP lightning yep. um, backups, and like that deck was pretty good. Uh, it seems like that 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 type of deck is what this is going to want to be in. That, that deck had a lot of big high cost things that want to quickly play its its uh, backups as quickly as possible. Yeah, I mean, I was playing three Raiden, three nine CP Bahamut. Yeah, it was playing a, a Dark Sephiroth. It, it had a huge mana curve. And, and today's not the only card that untaps this, right? Aerith, 
for example, you play an Aerith, you untap. Like, there's a lot of ways to get value out of this card very quickly. Um, right, right. Like, like, turn one is not horrible at all. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, we talked a lot about Ajito. I think Ajito is going to be very good. We right. didn't talk about Titan a lot. I don't think Titan is getting a lot of love. Um, <laughs> but I think it is extremely good. Uh, because you're not going to lose any games that you two for one someone with it. Uh, and kind of like I was telling Zach this too, like the way I, and I don't know if Cody plays similar way, but the way I played at the crystal cup, um, is that, you know, I don't tend to play my removal until I absolutely have to. Like I tend to, I, I tend to like offer trades. And if my opponent wants to trade, like, sure. They don't know my hand. Like they don't know how good that trade is. Like Zach was talking about earlier when he attacked the Dataluma, he's up into an 8k. He has, his opponent has no idea if he has another Dataluma in hand. It doesn't know the value of that attack. So I will tend to offer those trades. And it's not until my opponent accepts the trade and then in which they're like, okay, now I will cast Hackathon, then in which I respond with my removal. Uh, Titan's one of those cards where, like, I'm just going to attack with my big Earth idiot, and they're going to block or not block. And then after they try to use their combat trick, I'm going to cast Titan and blow them out. Yeah. Um, right. It's kind of like playing uh, chicken, right? Like, who blinks first, I think. Right. And one of you has a Titan on your team. Yeah, exactly. You know? So, I don't know, to me, like, to, not to mention it's EX Burst. I think that card is, like, probably pretty solid. Anybody I, about think, to say Cody? Oh, I think it's I think it's pretty good. I had one in my uh, in my pre-release, and uh, it, it put in work. I mean, I only won one game, unfortunately. But... Did you ever two-for-one? Did you get a two-for-one with it, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think... I'm trying to think... I... I don't remember what exactly the cards were that I was going I think up against. A, a lot of times what people are going to do with it is they're going to be like, I'm going to tighten this guy and fight that guy. You killed your guy. And it's like, yeah, that's like got to be the worst use for Titan in the whole world. Like you <laughs> right, should you be killing two things every that, time. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, otherwise, it should have just had the, like the, the card should have had the text of, uh, and someone even told me, they were like, oh, that card would have been fair at 4 CP. No, it would not have been. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The only way that card is fair at 4 CP is if, if it also says you can only use this during your main phase or whatever. Your first Listen, if that phase. card could be played off Minwoo when Minwoo swings, that'd be kind of insane. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Estinian is seeing a lot of, like, hype right now. Yep. Um, yep. Both for man, the art, the, you know. You know, I'm a, I'm a water player at heart. Like, I water is, like, my element. I love water. Um, that card is frightening. <laughs> like... No Cognazzo, like he that's his job. He had one job. <laughs> Besides Archfiend. Yeah. That was, <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. Yeah, I don't know. What are you guys thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to say that. No, I had yeah, never mind. Uh Hold so on. what what about Leo? Everyone uh, here is hyped about Leo. I'm not hyped. I think it's good. I actually just traded Chad a foil Leo today. So hopefully it does him well. But it was yeah, a, oh man, it was a pretty Leo, foil. I was sad to trade it. Yeah, Leo is. I don't know because he wants to be in a deck with a lot of monsters or something, but I want to play him in a deck with a lot of just variety. But like of summons a, a, and monsters don't want him. Characters, right? Right. Like, like he doesn't really do anything for him. Like I mean, he's I a got... kid that's bad at basketball and he wants to play on a good team with a bunch of like really good <laughs> players, but they don't want him on the team. <laughs> Right. Well, but the thing that's not totally true, I think, because he makes it easier to use multiple colored monsters, right? Like you don't need to have the no-no or Shen to untap Shantoto to convert between your colors, your green dragon. He just lets them all activate, whatever. You still want your no-no, but it's not as important to filter through the right color. You might be able to use more utility. Like you can untap your Ico every time in case you need to get a summon halfway through combat or something because Ico can make any color. Uh, stuff that's like fair. that I think he helps with. Uh, but he definitely wants to be in a deck with monsters because otherwise you're going to be flooding your field if they have Shantoto or some other board wipe. You can get blown out that way. Uh, but man, he could be really good with a ton of summons. And he's I not. Uh, yeah, I don't. It's not that. It's, don't get wrong. It's not that I think he's even bad. I don't think that at all. Um, I just don't know where he goes. You know what would be a cool deck with him? Is that we should talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Maybe that'll be for the next podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what about? I know you're big on the the quasi codal. I don't like that card because I like Cyclops. But uh, I, what what are your thoughts on yeah. it? Like why there are similar uses? Like yeah, Cyclops makes the rest of your team good. But I think so. We talked earlier. Like one's good for an alpha strike, yeah. and one's good yes. for a trade. 
Yeah, I think they're if you're trying to go really wide and you're trying to win kind of that more hasty game, like like we were talking about the dragoons when you want like the mono lightning with the new Astinian who's got haste and first strike and all these things. Yep. I think Cyclops is better, but Quetzalcoatl, it, a 4K power swing is pretty powerful. It's it's essentially like a golem, but you can be attacking, and I don't know if it's. Yeah, I like it with Hecaton, obviously, because it buffs your guy or yeah. makes your guy smaller. I just think that maybe a deck with, like, to get through a deck you can't normally get through, like Earth or something. Like, some something that you can't dull out of the way, you can't remove um, through without party attacking and losing a guy every time. Like, what's cold? It might get you there. I don't know. I think it's powerful. Again, maybe you're just right, though. Like, Cyclops is just better. I don't I mean, know. I don't, I don't know that for sure. I don't, I don't know. Cyclops is also more expensive, obviously, so. You can't play Quetzalcoatl off of the water backup though the uh, summoner that casts a uh, summon of two or less for free right yeah or if that card will see play <laughs> I, uh, I like the card yeah plays bismarck yeah um uh, the last card for me like, oh that's just two more cards i think that are like really playable um that weren't playable and sealed that much all right first off actually i take that back nidhogg is one of them because it's definitely playable and sealed um mm-hmm. and i would play it in every sealed deck i would play up to like three of them in every sealed deck <laughs> right um maybe i wouldn't play the fourth one but what are you guys thoughts on nidhogg obviously we're talking like there's there's two different decks this is going in right it's going in the wind ramp deck or it's going in the mono ice deck right both decks want to win the late game does it win yeah. the late game <laughs> uh i mean obviously if it if it goes down you're probably going to win the game i don't know uh i think the cost is a little high but I mean, obviously, if you get like the dream play where you get to renew it back or something. So that's it, what happens if so. Like, obviously, it's weak to vein, right? It's more than weak to vein. Um, yeah. But it does kill vein in the mirror match, and it right. does kill right. things like orphan. Um, to me, that does seem like it might see good uh, a good amount of play in the higher end ice decks, like the higher curve ice decks. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I know. I, I think Jamie, when you guys when you interviewed him, uh, I know he mentioned it. I can't remember if it was that interview or not, but uh, I don't know. I'm gonna try to fit it in somewhere. But <laughs> I mean, there's a lot, art, right? Like, <laughs> just, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think the card's awesome. Uh, I like it. Uh, now I'm gonna pose a question to you that I posed to Sam earlier, Cody. Uh, okay. Do you think it should have not been a random card out of their hand, or would that have been too good? Uh. Like they would re- like Zidane, like they would reveal it and then you pick a card rather than it being random. Do you think that'd be too powerful, or do you think that would have justified the nine cost a little more? I think it might have justified the nine cost a little more. Um, but I think either way, I think the card's still good. Mm-hmm. I, but yeah, I think that would have definitely justified the cost a little bit more. Cause I I think, also... So you think that playing a nine drop, it's okay. It's okay to <laughs> to take the best card out of their hand. The answer. The answer to. To Nidhogg, you take the card out of their hand and you kill their best forward is an okay thing to do? It's more of I don't like the random part. Like, I, I wish think... it was some yeah. other... What if, okay, what, like what, if it was, what if your opponent discarded two cards? That, sure. I mean, that's just... Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, I think that's that. a little... That's that, that, ridiculous. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. See, I don't know. That, I, I would rather discard two cards. I, think, I don't know. I guess it's I ice never mind. Ice, like, right? I, don't know. I yeah. think randomly discarding one in an ice deck. It's the same as discarding two cards. Kind of, yeah. Because you're, you're only going to have one card. Yeah, you're already on this plan of them getting rid of their cards. They're yeah. not going to have – they might be looking at, like, a Dottaluma and a wall. They don't want to yeah. get rid of either of those. So – that's fine, but like you were saying, the other kind of deck it wants to be in is like a wind deck. I'm assuming you mean a deck with like Sid 2, right? Mm-hmm. So well, you can ramp into it off the evokers? No, not necessarily, but yes. Yes, like I certainly want to play Sid uh, to ramp into Nidhogg, but it, I, I think that just playing five backups in Earth, or I mean in wind, sorry, is yeah. going to be very quick and very easy, so I don't really... I think that's fine too, like just ramping to five backups and then discarding two and playing your Nidhogg is fine too. Right. Uh, I was going to say, I think it might be that's where I would want to see their hand because I'm not an ice where I'm already making your hand quality pretty poor. Yeah. Uh, they they might have five cards in their hand. It's what, like, if, oh, well, what if you magic potted anyway. this card? That would be dope. Because <laughs> that's the thing, too. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a scenario where you'd want to. I'm trying to think of a scenario where you'd want to do that. I mean, obviously, you'd always want to do that. If, if I mean, like, your maybe... magic pot read, like, undole this 
Right, so you attack with it, and it, your magic pot... Wait, magic pot brings it back in dull, right? No. It does? Okay, it brings it back in so No, if your magic, magic pot comes in dull itself. Oh, right, right. So, so if, magic, if magic pot said, undull this, kill a guy, remove a random card from their hand, yeah, that would be that'd be nuts, right? Yeah. Seems pretty good. Yeah, so maybe maybe there's a way to play this with magic pot. One of the things that I like to do is, is go back, and, and, and that's one of the questions I want to ask you guys is... Um, what card do you guys think got the strongest um, from Opus 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 now that we're in Opus 6? What card got stronger? Um, my gut reaction was to say a different card, but, but for now we'll go with Magic Pot. Um, because Magic Potting, this guy seems awesome. For, magic Potting, Renoa seems good. There's a lot of enter the field effects. Oh, because um, yeah, you get the you dull their field and then you get the blink a guy. Yeah. If you get rid of the three CP. Right. One. Right. So it, if good. you blink something like lightning, you get to attack too. Like if you're playing like ice, ice lightning. Mm -hmm. I'm just scrolling through cards right now just to kind of refresh my memory on everything. Yeah, that Cody, do you have do you have one? <laughs> I'm trying to. Yeah, I'm trying to think at the moment as well. Uh, I mean, I think. <laughs> See, from playing Ice, a lot of the cards, they're just going to keep getting more powerful. So, like, cards like Genesis, uh, obviously adding Renoa, or, like, even Orphan. I mean, anything where I get to Dolan Freeze another guy yeah. is huge. Um, but now, as far as cards in general that I think have gotten better... Uh... So, some of the obvious answers are, like, Jesper and Doan, right? Because it's mm -hmm. a Dane. Um... Brother probably is one. Like there weren't there weren't too many times when you'd yeah. want to play that searcher over other ones in those kinds of decks. Ra now Raiden, because we have Vegito, right? You have Star Sybil is already nuts, and you get uh, <laughs> a Vegito. You get uh, Moogle eleven. You get Sid eleven if you're some sort of like Fire Earth deck. Um, yeah. Uh, anything that kills like big things in Wind, like the Alexanders or like Connie Senna back up. Not that you're ever gonna play that one, but. Uh, things that break 5 CP or larger or 9K or higher in Wind, I think, are a lot more powerful. Like, they've already been because Kamalot started getting popular and Orphan's been popular, but we're still getting big guys that are important. Like, Nidhogg, if anyone tries to play the light forward, yeah. Uh, there, there's, I think there's a quite a lot. Like, the Paladin, if that catches on. Uh, the new Garland, if that uh, Water Knights deck gets really good. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's reasonable. So, are you guys still, if you, if you still think about, like, the number one, yeah. like, my number one pick right now is shadow lord um and zach's seen a lot of my lists um recently they all have shadow lord in them um i think that you want a clean answer to paul <laughs> um, yeah i think that people don't realize that like getting hit with one paul is a game changer um you know i actually saw hunter nance make a comment uh about how like getting hit with paul for example is actually in net negative for the person to attack with Paul, which is true up to a certain point, uh, because he, he mentioned that like if your deck is not trying to mill them out, then you're going to end up losing the game because they they have cards like Menphilia, which get which which makes where cards in the 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 yard or the break zone matter, right? So you're gonna mm -hmm. lose the game because you gave them all these options. Cards like Miner, for example, right? And when he said that, I I agree with him 100, but I'm afraid that some people will take it too literal like you need to build a deck that's based around milling your opponent out which is not true you need to build a deck all you have to do is build a deck where if you hit once or twice with paul the game ends and that's mm -hmm. actually pretty easy with with ways to like reoccur Shant shantoro like with minor for example or uh ways to break it um cards like arcanist that like like just for example like i once played against a wind deck this was actually in the bot the boston crystal cup playing for day two where my opponent had like 12 or 13 forwards in play and my single Arcanist stopped all of them from attacking because he was on mono wind or wind water standard units. And he had like Rangers and like um, Chocobos and Choco Knights. Uh, he had all these three drops. He had Adele and he just couldn't attack because I had an Arcanist. So, you know, when, when he says you need to build a deck around milling your opponent, I don't think he means literally like you need Sids and you need Thieves. Like, no, you just need a deck where if you hit them once with Paul, or hit him twice, God forbid, that's 12 cards, the game ends. And right. I, what, what what you could do to test this theory is is you never even have to play a Paul. 
All you have to do is play every single game that you've been testing. And at the end of the game, count the number of cards in your deck. If it's less than 12, you need to make sure that you can kill Paul. Right. Yeah. Uh, that actually brings up a point. I thought of a, a card that I thought about a couple days ago, uh, and that's Zolbag uh, for Mono Lightning for the most part. Uh, I was like, it's a common from, was that Opus 1 actually? Yeah. Um, but I was actually surprised that I didn't see more of that card uh, for a while with Thought Maturge and Argath running around. I'm playing. Uh, I'm true. playing in my mono lightning list um, with the Duke Altana, so that I can actually search for the Ramza. That's another mm -hmm. clean answer because you can, if, if you have a bigger board, you can play the Ramza, attack and kill the Paul. But the Duke can go get the Zalberg or the Ramza. Right. Um, yeah, Zalberg is interesting too. I really like that card quite a bit. And I mean, I've been. Anytime I build mono lightning, I'm usually it's definitely on my radar. I, even before like Thought Maturge came out, I was playing Zolbag in my like Opus Four mono lightning decks. Usually, yeah. at least as a one of, yeah. Yeah, I mean, even if you don't hit anything in the game, I mean, you can still use it off Alcid and do six K to something. Yeah, as long as you don't have your own two CP forward. But yeah. Right. It is right. awkward that you have to choose. Yeah, there are very few cards. Just... That is one of them. Right. Yeah. We should actually do. I'm not saying next week, just so you know, but we should do a podcast in the future, which is like, you know, read the damn card. Uh, and it's very much so like, hey, these are things you need to know when playing with this card. Like, mm -hmm. like I think that, for example, Cody should learn to read Thaumaturge. When does it get oh. bigger? When does it get smaller? <laughs> uh, but more realistically, right? Uh, it's so, Sarah, it's, Sarah. Sarah is the problem. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Blame Sarah. Either, being a six either way. Either way. Uh, so Estola is is a, is another one, right? When you it's with the new Estola, when you attack with Estola, you must target. It doesn't matter if you have the Scions or not. So if they have a Data Luma, like you have to target, and that's things that people I think you know need to know. Um, like Zalbar, which, exactly. which card are you talking about? The new Estola. When it attacks, uh, I think you choose one for your opponent controls, <laughs> and I think you have to have five Scions. But either way, mm -hmm. I know that you choose. Yeah, yeah, you have to choose, yep. Right. So, like, there are just some cards, like Zabra, where you have to choose. I know that is, I've seen a play where Zach uh, played against someone, and they played a Zabra, and the guy had a two-drop, and Zach did not, and Zach's like, whoops. <laughs> you have to break your guy. Yeah, he had rigged you out, and I was like, okay. He's like, rigged is gone. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah. he says he has to. And he's like, oh, and he goes to pick it back up. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> I'm like, just, you'll learn for next time. Like, yeah. That's one of those painful lessons that you don't really forget. But. Yeah, so I think I think that would be an interesting uh, podcast to do for sure. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm still scrolling. Whenever you tell me to pick one card, it always kills me. Because <laughs> <Well, laughs> there's always going to be something I forgot about. Sure, sure. But, like, <clears throat> what's the card that you're, you're thinking of right now? Like, what card stands out to you? It's like, hey, you know, like... Dark Zemus. Dark Zemus. That, so that wasn't the card where Nodo came out. That's the card now. Why? I mean, it was a card when Nona came out uh, yes. too, but like it was. A I was kidding, of course. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Uh, there, there's a lot of effects that care about hitting, like especially with Paul. I think Paul's gonna be a huge contender in the meta, and if you can't answer a turn one Paul, it's gonna be really rough for you. And if they also happen to have a Zemus to go along with that later or whatever else, um, he also goes in a build with another card that I think's insane in the set is Ewan. Uh, okay, the yeah. Lightning three CP with haste. That well, if they have three guys, he's unblockable and has haste. Yeah. Him alongside Adele, and then like Luso to find either one, and then you just put Paul in there, and then you have Zemus to support whatever else. Like, I think that's gonna be kind of crazy. Um, yeah. there's another uh Zidane, like, you want to be attacking with Zidane, but you don't want him to die when you attack with him. So, if you have Zemus to make him be able to get through, you can still get the value off his attack without losing him every time because he's only 7k. Right. And one of the problems with uh, like the Mecha Chocobo, for example, is you could target him with abilities. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, what what is Zidane? Is it is it no summons or is it no summons or abilities? I think it's no. Uh, it's no abilities, right? Oh, can you not target with your own? Oh you, no, it's opponent's abilities. Right, right. But well, my point is, is that uh, while you can still kill with summons, you can't kill him with things like Data Luma pings. So being able to yep. Zemus him in is actually pretty good because they can't just respond by Data Luma pinging him. Whereas like with a Mecha Chocobo, if I remember right, it can't be targeted by summons. It's the opposite. But you could so, you yes. could target with abilities, which actually made the card uh, pretty fragile. Yeah, but it can't yeah. be chosen by summons. Yeah, it's interesting you say you say Dark Zemus because 
and this is kind of just spitting off the wall, but like one of the cards that like, you know, if, if someone is building a goal wings deck, uh, then not only will they play brother, but they might play some number of copies of Shinra or at least Shinra at least is, is increasing that deck yeah. viability. And in a deck like that, possibly having a Titus or a Titus, depending on how you pronounce it, uh, <laughs> is really good and and that card is always good with dark zemus so i also wonder if at any point the earth summon carbuncle is going to come into the nope. front <laughs> nope we well, got kaitis now <laughs> uh, like i mean sure I, but yep i'd rather play kaitis yeah. like yeah why though like you can there's so many things like if people are playing I so do, there, I there is a summon the raiden there's easy the there raiden. is a reason yes there is a reason to play carbuncle and that reason is, if there's some sort of summon deck that takes over the meta with something like Zodiac or Ultima, I think, or the two... Well, you, can't, you can't counter those, though. You can't... Is it, what's Carbuckle? It, it, has, it, has, it has to choose... Uh, it has to choose something you control to counter. Oh! Yeah, that card's never going to see play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like, like countering a Raiden's pretty dope, right? But, like, they still get their 5-drop back up. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with countering the Raiden for... Th- for three, five Are CP. You? The, a Raiden? That can just end the game. Yeah, you're you're right. But like you having that card book on your deck is gonna end, <laughs> end the game so much many it's so like, many more times. I okay, so here's an example of where I would see it. Counters play. Diablos. Uh if you're playing an I mean, I get that it counters stuff, but like if but, you're if if you play Ico, for example, um mm-hmm. the two drop one, if you had some way to not Dark Lord yourself, God no. <laughs> uh, but if you had some way to like fill your deck or fill your breaks up with a bunch of different summons where you had a suite to choose from, then having a counter spell in those choices would be good, right? Okay. So maybe, for example, maybe in the deck you're, you're talking about, you could play the Moogle 11. So at some point you could special to go get Carbuncle. Right. And then that's yeah, where it would see play. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, like, so imagine if, how if it's not play one of ever total, right? It has to be. Yeah, yeah. You, ho- so you hope it goes how damage. good it be though. If someone's planning their whole turn around untapping with Diablos and breaking your guy, right? Sure. Like you can just be like, no counter it. I keep my guy, and also you don't untap your backups and do whatever you're planning for the turn. Completely throws off their curve. And that's pretty good. Yeah, it is. And then you're gonna win that match though, 100 percent of those games, because you're playing against someone with Carbunk on their deck. <laughs> right. All right. I, 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 uh... I, I'm just messing with you, though. I I, I do think the <laughs> you, card you said Phoenix was bad when it came out, and ended up being one of your favorite cards. So wait, the seven drop or the four drop? <laughs> yes, you no. told me the card was bad when at first. I probably did. I don't remember that. But... <laughs> Believe it or not, I I, I, I did play Carbuncle before. <laughs> I played it before. It wasn't good when I played it, though. I, I don't. At some point. I feel like it's going to hit a critical mass of just there's so no, many summons I, that people are playing. I'm just it. kidding. Yes, it, it could possibly see play at some point, but certainly as like a, a tutor target or some sort of like toolbox. Yeah, I'm effect. maybe. Like what if there was a, a guy that said like, uh, if there's a Ford, like a Stola, for example, where you could just mm-hmm. sacrifice it to go get a summon out of your deck. Like you don't yeah, cast it, you just go get it out of your deck. Oh, there's a backup that does that now, but yeah. Right, so like Terra for Terra, for example, does the opposite. Like Terra, um, wait, there's a backup that does that. Yeah, the new Arisha, the two drop lightning backup tutors any summon. Oh, okay, so maybe you could play an Arisha deck. There we go. Maybe it's playable now in Arisha deck. You you <laughs> broke it, Zach. You broke the in, in, your, in your lightning earth deck, yeah. No, I mean like I, I without without joking, I would seriously consider it like. Yeah. I would just be really upset every time I drew it. I guess no, I wouldn't. I yeah. just discard it, Teresia. Never mind. <laughs> we, we found the solution to the problem. Oh, you have to discard summon. Okay, I thought she was just break search or summon. So she's not as crazy as I thought. Okay. Well, no. Is that, like, isn't that better? Because we found a way to get rid of the cart buckle we drew. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, right? And it, so sometimes you're gonna draw the stupid cyclops that you're playing, and instead you can turn it into a cart buckle and make them counter their, their sure. diablos all right yeah all right <laughs> that'll be our that'll be our uh our question to the audience are we gonna start doing an mtg goldfish uh <laughs> against the odds deck oh yeah <laughs> Carbuncles. hey so yeah so so something that you know i would like to move forward with that we talked about is that eventually at some point with, with zach's gonna kind of do like a, a deck um 
tech type thing where he's going to kind of build a deck. And then I would like to take that deck out and test it. So uh, have no doubt, Zach, that if you build a deck with Carbuncle, I will play it. All right. <laughs> just say. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think we uh, covered most of what we want to talk about. Six, right? It's getting kind of long, too, the cast here. So, yeah, uh, real quick before we close out, uh, we want to ask everybody that's listening uh, if you have any suggestions. Now, we already have a few things planned, like uh, Sam was just talking about. Um, I'm going to make up some brews, uh, maybe some sweet interactions, try to pull off, and he'll, he'll pilot them on Oxygon type thing. Uh, any other type of content that you would like to see from us? So, it could be something other people do, uh, but preferably, you know, something new. Yeah. Um, like, well, any, what, what do you guys well, want that 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 you're not seeing out in the community right now? Exactly. So, any of those suggestions, shoot it to us. Uh, now, Cody, if you'd like to close us out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, as always, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, another shout out to Cards of Evil East for sponsoring our podcast. Uh, and as always, uh, just like, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, that way, you don't miss out on any future content. God, his voice and, is so good. And uh, <laughs> we. <laughs> He's bored for this. He was bored for and, this. Is natural. <laughs> And uh, we are the Choker Bros. I'm Cody Snodgrass. I'm Zach Burrell. And I'm Sam Snipe Prime. See you next week.